So that's what I was going to say. So I've got a quote and I want to ask you what you think about it. What um, is it? I came across this quote last week. Yeah, last week. Um, no, sorry, this week, Friday, because um, mm. the week's not ended yet. But um, So the quote is, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. That's true. You think so? Yeah, I agree with it. Um, because it depends what kind of experience you went through, first mm. of all. You can experience mistakes and success at the same time um but it's the way you reflect on them because some people will take a mistake as um a failure but actual actually that mistake is gonna help you being successful in the future yeah so that's what i think no i get that so you know what so it's interesting because like i feel like and by the way there's nothing wrong like everyone's got their own perspective and you can agree and disagree with something but like i was having this conversation with people on friday about this quote so i'm doing this training program and there's like a, maybe about like 20, 30 people in it. So a lot of people were having this conversation. I was saying, hold on. So everyone's like, I agree with it, I agree with it. And I was thinking, hold on, but what what about the subconscious learning? The learning that we don't reflect on because subconsciously there's things happening, you know, constantly in, in our minds and, and we go through experience and we still learn. We just don't know we're learning. Or like yeah. that's that's where intuition is, right? It's like intuition comes in the form of like what subconscious is thinking. So when we go, I, I kind of got feeling about this. It's actually a subconscious telling us something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How do you how do you get a feeling of importance? Um. The way I feel in terms of um. So what what like what makes you feel important? What makes me feel that's that's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel important when, um align with my beliefs rather mm. than what the outside is telling me so um if i'm doing the right things in life and i'm working towards what i love doing and i feel like i'm doing something good or helping other people um that's when i feel important but also when i have the right people around me as well because i feel like they are a bit big part of my life and they're helping me grow as a person um I usually say that it's nothing to do with, you know, money or, or um, you know, the standard that the world is trying to put onto people and force onto people. Mm. I, I would feel important because of the, the energy people bring me, kindness, you know, people being helpful, um, something that I can give back as well to all those around me. Mm. Yeah. I like that, and and I know you said you're a community person. Yeah. And I feel like it reflects in the things that you do. So I know you had like what two two events yes. at the moment, and and you run something called um, Afro Club Five. Yeah. So what what was the origins of that, and like how did that come about, and what so made you want to do it actually in first place? What was the ignition? So I've always been interested around my own culture which is black culture. I'm Senegalese and French. My dad is Senegalese. My mom is French. And I've always been more interested in my black side because of the culture. I've always lived in, you know, Western country. And it's cool. I mean, this is my mom's side. I'm, I've learned about it for years. But my first time going in Senegal was last year, actually, in September, my dad's side. And when I went there, I realized that there's so much the world hasn't seen from mm. this country and from all the countries in Africa I would guess um the raw beauty of it the the emotions the um, the help people bring as well cuz this is a very individual country uh, England and even France all the countries I've lived in um but when you go to Africa you realize that everyone is really helpful with each other and there's also um, that you, you don't need much to be happy. You don't need much to be happy there. You you have your family around you. If someone needs help, everyone is on it. Um, you can go anywhere and enjoy the beauty of the landscape. Nothing is touched too much. Everything is raw. You know, the feelings, the, the emotions, the food is amazing. Even, they, even um, in terms of health, they don't uh, process their food as well so that means that even even for that you would you would be able to go to the market and buy stuff that is organic like everything is just real it feels so real compared to when you come here you know sometimes you have you know the food in the shops is just completely processed um clo- clothing wise you have to 
adapt to a certain standard. You know, you can't wear too many colors or you can't do certain things because people will think like, oh, this doesn't match. Mm. You know, but uh, if you go back to Africa, you would see the attires. Everything is in different colors. People are lovely. They're helpful. They're very family orientated, and that's something I really like. So I thought when I came back here, I said let me incorporate that into what I do and make people understand that it's not because you come to a westernized country I would say or you know in Europe that you have to change yourself to be accepted um so yeah that that's where the idea comes from and I thought you know event wise we should have bring all of that all together in the same space mm. yeah I think it's beautiful like I've, I've been to the last one and like even the talks that were there, they were so empowering. And I remember, um, I don't remember his name actually, because I, I walked in, I think midway through. Um, but he was talking about education and learning. And he was talking about how education doesn't end when we finish school, when we finish college, when we finish university. BJ, it's, yeah. it's a long life journey. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that's beautiful. And I think it's really empowering as well. And, and, and the whole thing around clothing and like the, you know, the colors and stuff. And I think it's really radiant. And I see that. What's, what, what's the number five about? Like uh, I wanted to ask you, I, I, Let me read it. it's you. about uh, values. Okay. So creativity, respect, uh, integrity, love. And it, it's basically for people to remember that where you come into a community, everyone mm. is equal. Because people tend to forget that sometimes you would think you're better because of your value. But no human has a value. Mm. We come on this earth the same way and we live the same way and no matter what you do here money's not going to make you better than anyone here i think the, um, the things that make you stand out the most is your kindness your heart your soul how you help people in this life and and how people perceive you because that's quite important because that's the way they're going to approach you and the energy they give you is going to reflect on what you do in the future Mm. That's what I believe in. It's really important, and this is the way you're gonna be. You're gonna be able to give it back, because if everyone would give you negative energy, then you be you wouldn't be able to go forward. But there's yeah. beautiful people around you, but you need to um, to be able to see past what the world seems like. Money is the only thing people have to offer. There's just, just so much more. It's so much more than that. Yeah. No, I, I agree. That there's no point in being the richest person in, in the grave. Yes. And and, and, and I, I refer this to this point every single time. It's around now. And I think Jay-Z was saying, he was saying, look, like if I had all the money in the world tomorrow and I was the only human being existing on this planet, it's like, what difference does that money make? So I, I, I think it's about, and, and I think money is, you know, it's, it's an exchange of value and it's, you know, it's about how we use money and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but where do people where, where do you think people get their values from? It's it's okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I do like that. <laughs> I do like that question. I would say everywhere. Mm. You you get it from education, um, but then education is at home and it's at school. Um but you also get it from influence around you. Um I got it from home, you know, my parents yeah. have been really really you know um strict with us to make sure we are going on the, the right path and when i say strict i don't mean too tough i mean they were guiding us to be successful and to be respectful with everyone and to make sure all the values we are taught home we take them wherever we go yeah you know because it just doesn't stop where you you learn it it goes beyond beyond that so yeah you can learn them at home but i think some people would it depends how strong-minded you are sometimes as well because you can mm. be taught something at home and then you go outside you do completely the opposite you know so yeah that's interesting i, I think and and while we're talking as well I'm, i you know asked you that question and i haven't actually thought about it myself mm. um, what do you think it, it's interesting because the first thing that came up to me i was thinking that's so obviously i think Values are passed down in the first place. Um, we don't create values that they're, they're given, they're given to us. But I was thinking, like, how do we, like, who do we take the values from? And I think obviously mainly it will always be parents to start with. Um, and I think sometimes whether parents are present or absent, sometimes absent parents can create values as well. Yeah. Um, absence can create something too, which is really interesting. And um. And I think I think there's something about connection. So I think I was thinking, what what's the one thing that people have in common? So if that, for example, if Someone's taking values from the parents or the role models or people around them. 
And it's always that one thing that's kind of universal is the connections, how they're connected to, to those people yeah. um, to get those values. Mm. Um, I, I, I think that's what it is for me, um, which is quite interesting. Um, what's what's uh, what's in a goal like? It's beautiful, you know, mm. especially when you know people there. It makes it very unique that you have a home because you can live anywhere in the world, but usually you would connect more in a place where it's more familiar and you have people you can connect with for me was um, my family uh, was my grandmother and my aunties you know my cousins it was beautiful to see them because I haven't seen my grandmother before it was the first time me going to Senegal and seeing her that was the most amazing experience I've ever I've ever had in my life and when I came back actually from Senegal that's when I realized this is just you just can't you do there's some things you don't compare like happiness mm. is just when you know what home feels like um so yeah senegal is a beautiful place um it's very hot there i think when i went there it was a uh, rain season yeah so but it was still really hot and every well, like time humid humid kind of yeah very yeah. humid but the mosquitoes come and just <laughs> <laughs> they eat you yeah. they eat you so that was that was the only thing but the walks on the beach where it's just amazing it's beautiful or the chickens that wake you up mm. they're quite loud but they're it's cool loud. it's like a it's like a natural alarm, so it's an alarm <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah it's a beautiful country it's yeah beautiful I, country. I can relate to the chickens I, I used to so i used to go to um to see my grandma back home and, and she, she used to live in like in a village you know you got all the the farms and the cows and all of that stuff yeah um so it's like it's a very natural life um but yeah yeah the chickens in the morning yeah it's 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 them ones where you don't need to it's kind of like you're starting to connect with nature yeah rather than connecting with your phone all the time we do find ourselves on our phone quite a lot sometimes sometimes it's for business as well but it's a habit that people have nowadays where speaking speaking of phones yeah do you think we can see the impact that phones have on us do you think that impact is visible and like, do you think people are aware of like what, how much influence that phone would have on them? Um, do you know what? It depends what kind of influence we're talking about. Because some people, it's actually good for them to be on their phone all the time because that's how they generate money. Um, but I think it can it can take a negative toll on people because of first of all, for your health, it's not really good to stare at a screen for that long. Yeah. You know, and also, are you able to see outside of? social media or outside of what the media is showing you and some people can't make the difference anymore and they value um they value the phone or social media more than they value the real life and this mm -hmm. is why they are struggling to to view emotions and nature for what they truly are i believe that that is what it's like but i think self-reflection like you were saying earlier on is very important because if you are able to tell yourself actually I've been on my phone for so long today I need to take a break I need to put it on the side for a few hours maybe go read a book you know maybe play some music go f have a walk mm. or do things that you would not normally do but that then becomes a habit and then you're able to do that more often I guess yeah yeah I get that I, I think there's also the other side of it it's like um I feel like that people share a lot of like missing from you know that that there's been a big thing misinformation, yeah. you know, malinformation, whatever it's called. But um, like yesterday, no today, and maybe a week ago, I've been sent something of like through Instagram. A few of my like, really good friends of mine sent me some stuff, and and it's all like conspiracy sort of stuff, mm. anyways. And and basically, but but what it is like, I started looking into it. And what was happening is like some people edited like a video of someone saying certain things and made it sound like a particular type is of it way. Is it IA? No, that no, new no, technology. No. Thing yeah, no, it, it, it was. It wasn't even that way. It's just like it's just some someone just like made like the mouth move. It, it wasn't AI, but it was someone made the mouth move towards like what a person was kind of saying. But they've edited. So you know, for example, like let's say we do this podcast, and then someone will cut out bits of what we're saying and kind of restructure and put it in a different it's crazy, way. crazy. You know? Yeah, but that's the thing. So, but they sent it, they sent it to me and they said, oh my God, look at it, this is crazy. 
So in their minds, they've already kind of accepted it for what that thing is. Instead of doing some more research. Or... Yeah, so I started looking into it. So I went in and looked into a full interview or the full thing that they said. I was like, that's not even the case. Like someone's edited yeah. this thing and I started challenging it a little bit. Like, I'm, and, and I'm not saying, you know, wherever the conspiracy is, I'm not saying the conspiracy doesn't exist, but it's always a conspiracy until it's proven that it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah, with that conspiracy thing is so, so interesting. Because mm. sometimes it sounds so real, you don't even know what to do with that information you know some people do some more research about it i personally see so many of this type of posts sometimes but then it just does some things don't sound realistic to me so i just leave it if it's beyond what i can do or what i can understand i don't really bother because there's just we're going through so much information every day it's just limitless now the mm -hmm. social media everyone is on it in every countries of the world so i think you have to be very selective with what you allow your brain to capture to yeah. take uh, but some people can't do that difference sometimes so they be oh my god like you know but you don't, you need to be careful yeah do, do you know what my thing is like this is going to sound crazy like i've, I've reflected on, on on these type of things a lot mm. well, actually it's not going to sound crazy let, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let, me take, let me take that back but i was thinking um our phones or like social media well social media in particular are basically extensions of our identity so they're not they're not necessarily the whole identity that we've got, but they are an extension of that of of who we are, mm. which is interesting. So I start playing around with this like new concept of like, okay, cool. Someone's on Instagram, someone's on you know Facebook, whatever it is. It's like that's an extension of who they are. It's not necessarily yeah. who they are exactly. It's just an extension of who they are. I I believe so. It en enhanced. Um their personality. Yeah, and some and sometimes or maybe it's that who they want to be as well. Yeah, yeah, it's true yeah no you you have a point here i feel like for some people they use it to the advantage but some people really don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would meet them in real life and you can tell like okay from what i see on social media this is really you mm. you know you can you know you can feel that that same character same energy but with some people you meet them in real life and you're like first of all catfish yeah they don't look the same on their picture but that's 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 okay you know if I've, that makes I've, them I've feel listened, better. I've, I've, I've been I've been for a phase. <laughs> I've been for a phase before when I was dating, uh, in the past, and yeah, I've been catfished a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even surprised. Like a lot of girls do that. Um, how did that feel? <laughs> um, I, I felt betrayed. Yeah. I felt betrayed. But but the thing is, like, um, I think now at this stage in my life, like, I feel like with some of them, maybe they knew they were catfishing, but some of them maybe believed that that's who they, you know, that's who they were. That's the one. Because I feel like when you start using filters or anything to make you look better, the more you do it, because it's a progression, right? You won't realize it until you reach a certain point. Some people actually don't realize. And they're like, oh, I actually look like that. Yeah, you look like it, but this is definitely yeah. not you, you know? Yeah, I just feel like I just feel like everyone's looking for something. Yeah. Like, and I feel like I've been there as well. Like, I've been looking for things like... But what I realized is that I was looking for things out there rather than in here. And it's just that's like, strange, that's yeah. where I got lost. No, like the whatever I was looking for, it wasn't in a party, it wasn't in I don't know, some stupid thing or whatever. It was not there. Mm. It's not there. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you can only be happy when you found yourself mm. and you look within and <clears throat> you discover yourself actually, because we would think we know ourselves until we actually dig deep inside. And we look around ourselves as well because it's very important to see who's in your life because these people have a massive impact on the person you are. You wouldn't realize it, but you pick up stuff around you a lot. Yeah. But when you are aware of who you are, like truly who you are, you'll be able to um, decide properly and be more selective of things. Some people don't know how to do that. And I think it's an important thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's the interesting part. I, I realise that people who discover themselves also discover people that discover themselves as well. Yes. And it's just it's just a good... Because I think it's that thing of like people recognise they're another person because they have it too. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they feel like, oh, this is different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> weird but different. But sometimes it can be good. It can be also Well, bad. weird and different is the same thing anyways. So that's that's how I see it. Uh, different because like if someone be... If someone says you're weird, that, that means you're different to the norm right because like where it is different it's like if something's different unless you're unstable <laughs> <laughs> okay that's, unless that's, you're, yeah, yeah i know what you mean but unless that's, you are that's so really different, different. <laughs> yeah yeah because then when you're unstable um different can feel with but it's not weird it's normal yeah you know 
That's interesting. And and that's the thing. And like, what's the line of like, kind of like, I don't know, someone being crazy and maybe maybe in their, in their mind they're not crazy, but they're maybe just very unique or like very different. Yeah. Like, what is, like who decides the line, you know, and we've got all of these like um, conditions and things that people get diagnosed with and it's like, who decides yeah. that? It's, it's, it's an interesting one. Maybe we just, yeah, that I like, I like that. I've never thought about it, to be honest. Um, but there is a, pathology you know which means your body is made differently if you compare it to the norm of normal people as you call it um but yeah scientific scientific what's it called scientific yeah, yeah scientifically they've basically said that these people are not normal <laughs> yeah but that's because they don't know how to fit in a social space and they act different but maybe they are normal. Maybe we're just all supposed to be different like that. Maybe, like maybe extreme, to them. Extreme but that's the thing. Ways. But maybe to them, the normal people are not normal. You know, like so. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. But there is the 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 there are like indicators and elements of like we know when someone's a little bit out there, out there kind of thing. Or mm. I, I I think it's the ability to respond to certain things. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe that's where it gets a bit different when someone's not able to respond to what's happening around them in life. I think that's when it's a bit. It's a bit more difficult. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. Um, t- Tell me about music. Because I don't even know what your actual connection with music is, but I know that's yeah. something you're passionate about. I've always loved music. Um, I've released a music, was it two years ago? But I took it out. I took it out, you know, out of my account because I wanted to rebrand. Yeah. And... um change of style and find my style so was it singing yeah singing yeah. singing um so i decided to take a few years to find myself a bit better in terms of my, my music and um yeah i've decided to go back into it and i'm going to be performing on the 21st of april nice. as well yeah i'm really excited um but music is my passion uh, it's all i've always loved music because that's a really good way for me to express myself um i feel like i'm better with music than with words sometimes Mm. and music is you know universal everyone can can understand me better if they listen to my lyrics and my you know melody so that's why i love music because i sing from the heart and obviously you know from from words as well but yeah that's what I really like here. Oh, that. Mm. So you write your own music, I guess. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm currently writing um, a song that is about um, the world in general, but also my past and my present and how I was able to progress through um, things I've been through and you know how um, I've overcome certain situation mm. so yeah it's always a story it's not just empty lyrics is is part of who i am um yeah do you know i love this conversation because you you're literally leading the conversation to the point where like those were the questions i actually had oh you was gonna me. ask <laughs> yeah yeah so so one of, the, one of the things i was gonna ask you is um what do you think what do you think the state of the world is like, at the moment that's, that's a really good question Hmm. It's an interesting one because there's good things, but there's also bad things happening. And I I always lean towards, well, my, my mind always sometimes goes toward the bad things that are happening because of the kind of person I am. I'm kind of like a sponge where I absorb feelings and um I absorb things very quickly. So if there is something that happens in another country where, you know, you know, all these racism stuff, all these, um, you know, bad stuff happening to people. And I see that online, you know, if I wake up in the morning, for example, and I see this type of things it really affect me for the rest of the day, because I, I don't know, it's unfair. Sometimes I feel like in this world, there's so many things that are happening, which are so unfair. And it's not supposed to happen. It's just that we live in a very corrupted world <clears throat> where people have to suffer for other people to live better. Mm, that's a really good point. 
Yeah. Do, do, do you know what I like about you? I don't think I don't think you just absorb. I think I think what you do, you absorb and you also like create impact or like you action certain things. Yeah. I think I think some people would absorb and then basically then sit there and kind of like carry it with them. I think you absorb and you're like, you know what, I need to make something. Finding I solutions. I need to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, this is the way to do it. If you're just going to stand there and watch, nothing's going to get better, you know with the small help that you can provide, I think you should go for it. Because if we're all doing that, you know, one by one is enough humans on this planet. <laughs> you know, if we all say, actually, I'm going to be able to make that very small difference. But that small difference, multiply it by millions. This world wouldn't be like that now. You know, That's why that's you run community events. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's exactly why. Um and you know, you know what's interesting about it? You said if one person takes responsibility, like my, so I have this like theory of like, you know, we've talked about equality all the time and we talk about fairness and all of the other stuff. I think obviously I think actual, so I think let me just break it down into two things. I think actual real equality in terms of like sometimes maybe ability yeah. doesn't exist because, you know, some people might be more able than others, maybe physically and mentally. But I think in terms of equality of having equal opportunities or like treating each other equally, I think, the solution, and this is my theory, the solution to that is that if every single person woke up in the morning and kind of focused on themselves internally and said, you know what, I'm going to look at everyone else as equals, like I'm going to treat them equally and, and all of that stuff, then that's how equality will be achieved. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times it, it's a thing of like people are pointing fingers and saying These, they need to do this, they need to do this. But actually, if we all just woke up one day and we had a disagreement, so not not disagreement, if we had this agreement where we say, um, you know, we, we're gonna. I'm gonna be equal to everyone else, and yeah. then and then that makes a big difference. I agree with you, um, but then being equal, we can all be equal while being different, and this is what makes sense. What you just said is a really good point because someone, for example, if we're talking about financially, let's say, I could be equal with someone, and that person earns more than me, but then equally, we would do the same work if that makes sense. Um, but then some people would think, oh, that person is earning much more than me, so she should do something for the world. You know, that's not how it works. People do whatever they want, mm. you know. But someone with a good heart is supposed to do these things sometimes. It's like you don't need to wait for people to do it and then you're going to do it. You do it and then people will follow you out of example. That's what. That's how I work anyway. How many people earn billions nowadays? Some people don't help no one. And they don't have to, but as a good person, I feel like, like I said earlier, we are here for a limited amount of time. Why, why aren't you? Why aren't you able to give a bit of joy to someone else that is not lucky? Mm. Because this is purely luck, by the way. I could be born in another family in another country, where people are really unlucky. But no, I was born in a family that was able to give me the world. And I'm really, fa um, you know, thankful for that and thankful for them. But some people are not as lucky. Yeah. You know, and that's just luck. And some people don't understand that. They would say, oh, you need to work your ass off. Like Kim Kardashian say, oh, how yeah, dare no, you? Yeah. How dare you say that when you know you're just lucky. You was born in a rich family already and you did all yeah. your nonsense to get there. Do you know what I have? Um, so so I agree with that. So I think I think there is that element of like people born into certain things, and and I'm not gonna deny that. Mm -hmm. But I, I did I did see like another aspect of it. I think so. Let, let, let me clarify. So I feel like sometimes like some people can be born into like a rich family and they do nothing with their life. Yeah. They don't achieve anything. And I think and I think sometimes I give a bit of like a, a little bit of respect and um, I recognize a bit of like drive from the person who's had access to all of those resources and also they made something with it. Yeah. So it's like the whole, you know, the people people was making that joke about Donald Trump. He's saying I had a small loan from my dad of one million dollars, and it was oh, that's not a small loan. Yeah. Did he say that? No, he said that. Yeah, he said he said the way he started his empire is by having a small loan of one million dollars. That's it's a small loan. But the thing is, it's like you give that one million to another person, they might not build what he built. Yeah. You know, so so there is the element of like, okay, cool. Um, yeah, someone is born into it. Someone has this and whatever. But I, I still recognize some of the achievements that people get to because of their drive and who they are as well at the same time yeah but i agree some I, I've, yeah no you're right i mean there's there's the achievement side and there's also the side where what do you do with your money are you making an impact in the world because we are all achieving 
you know we all trying to be successful and that's a good side of someone wow you know that person is working hard but I feel like we also have to wake up sometime and say what can I do to have a positive impact in the world how can I help people I feel like helping people is also an achievement and some people it's not that they are selfish they're just trying to put that money somewhere but some people make it to the top and they still don't do anything about it again it's a choice but I feel like when you have a certain amount of money you could definitely help people yeah. that's 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 just my my insight I, will, I also heard that she's done a lot with um what, what was she doing like she was giving legal representation to, um Kim, Kim Kardashian yeah legal representation for people that she, are in jail or some sort I can't remember exactly what it was I think she's using her um, her network to yeah. do that I don't f she's done like one year two years of law in Harvard yeah I'm not sure but I mean she, she's got something that's got a good cause and, and, and yeah I've and that's heard, good and I've heard some real stories of mm. like people saying no she's you know she's helped me with this and helped me with that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, oh, that's really good. That's well, I mean, that's 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 the side of me that doesn't portray, you know. And um, that's the problem. They yeah. should do that because we think, oh, all these people that have the money, they don't do anything about it. But maybe they're doing more than what we think they're doing. They're just not showing off. Yeah. You now we'll look at Aladdin. Can you look it up by any chance? Kim Kardashian's uh, help, legal help. Yeah, legal help that she does. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm I'm interested now. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's that's the thing. Like, I, I try to look into things. So you know what it is. I think for me, I always try to like look at different dimensions. And 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 you said it earlier. You said there's a lot of good and a lot of bad in in, yeah. in the world. And I think that's always like I, I feel like that's always been the case. And maybe sometimes the good is winning more. Sometimes the bad is winning more. But I just feel. Oh, like we wouldn't know because of the the things they are deciding to portray in social media. Exactly. Sometimes they just want to attract people's attention rather than helping people get better. Yeah, it's like what is gonna get people to say, "Wow, this is crazy. This is terrible. Maybe terrorist attacks, you know, <laughs> uh, or bad stuff happening." But usually, when it's bad stuff, that's gonna gain more attention. Or when it's things that have to do with nudity, you know, girls showing off, you know, the bikinis, and stuff. this is what's gonna attract people. But when it's positive stuff, it doesn't get as much attraction anymore. Yeah. Oh, well, that's well, that's the thing. That so so what it is? You, you said it yourself, like attention and and. The biggest currency right now is attention. Yeah. Because um, you know, all the advert companies and all these like different things, they they, they sell people's attention. They you know, they 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 basically um like, you know, if you listen to a music video or whatever, and, and the things that get attention is usually things that have drama. Yeah. Uh things that are like controversial. Um no one like people don't really care, like no one's gonna like go click on meaningful things, like improve your life and whatever. Even even if you go on YouTube and you look at categories and what gets most views and stuff like that. Mm. Like obviously there's there's a big following in terms of like, you know, people who create personal development content and people that, you know, people are learning that stuff. So I'm not saying there isn't community for that. Yeah. But like that's not the biggest thing out there. The biggest thing is like this person walked out during the interview and was like, Oh my god, what happened oh. there? And they start watching the thing. I've actually you know what, funny enough. I was I got I got caught in that like four maybe like five weeks what, ago. Walking out of an interview. <laughs> no 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 no. I got I got like some, something popped up on my thing, mm. and it says a uh, a modern woman walks out an interview or whatever or a podcast or something like that, and I'm like so the thing is I don't care if she walked out yeah but I'm like it's the way it's written yeah no, you so, but, want to but, but, but yeah it provoked me to find out like, what happened that he made her walk out yeah and I'm watching it and basically I watched it for like ten minutes yeah and I was thinking fuck. Uh, that's 10 minutes of my life I'm going to get back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasted my time. What I've did you learn? What did nothing. you Nothing. <laughs> I've learned nothing. Literally, I've learned nothing. Mm -hmm. I've just, I've learned not to watch those videos. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's what I took away from it. Yeah, once in a while, it's, I think it's okay. You know, yeah. you can allow yourself to be a bit curious. But um, some people, they do that the whole day. And I have a lot of people actually that told me I was on TikTok for two hours, I was on social media for the whole day, on a day off. You're working a nine to five. You don't have time to do anything that you like. You don't travel. And on your day off, you're on your phone the whole day. Some people actually do that. And I was so shocked because myself, I would never allow myself to do that. If I have a day off, which I do because I work from home. <laughs> but even when I used to work in, you know, in an office, I would never do that. I would find time to play guitar and work on my singing skills. Um, I would plan a day out you know a walk or maybe go to the swim or go to the gym find what's happening in london um 
something I can learn from and even have fun because let's have fun like you know this life is short you know we can find so many things to do why do you want to look at someone else's life while you're suffering your you know in your own because that that is self and this is bad yeah self-sabotage yes. kind of thing but do you, do you think you know what yes yeah, so i feel like you have um you have like a really good mindset around like life being short and it's like is this one thing well actually number one is the longest thing we do anyways but um even though it is short yeah. you know we can say short but it's the longest thing that we do yeah um, but then I, f I feel like you have this like really nice perspective on it but I think what's missing with people or maybe like I've, 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 I can relate to how you feel I feel like what's missing with people is that some people don't realise that until it's late you know like until they get to a certain age or maybe they're in a deathbed or and you know people have all these regrets and I think mm -hmm. realising it is not a thing of like I think this I think realising it is a thing of I feel it yeah so when we feel that life is short and we feel like things are like there's more things we can do in life and just take life in differently when that feeling comes and that's when it makes a difference yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no it, you're making <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's, it's making me think a lot you know? mm. um they don't realize it until late but i feel like some things are when you're stuck in your own ways and you're not trying to come out and discover mm. what's out there, you will never, because no one is going to come and do it for you. You know, I feel like you need to take that opportunity and say to yourself, I need to stop that. I need to come out of my comfort zone and, and do it. You know, yeah. that's how, that's what I had to do. You know, um, no one ever told me, Oh, Rama, you need to, to do that. You need to stop being on your phone. But that's when I was a teenager. Like this is like five years, six years, seven years ago. And I didn't need anyone to tell me. Mm. There is a part in your head that knows you're doing something wrong. And I know for sure these people, they know it. They'll be on their phone. It's like, actually, I've been here for two hours. And they'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, some people's screen times are crazy. Like, I, even, like, sometimes if, when I remember, like, I would ask people, like, what's their screen time? And then people's screen time is crazy sometimes. Yeah, it's like half a day. Yeah. Yeah, it's even mad. more sometimes. Yeah, it's mad. And, and, and also that thing of, like, um, no one's going to come and do it for you. I agree, but some some people will come and do it with you. No one yeah. can do it for you, but some people <laughs> what, do it with you. Being on the as screen a, with no, you. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't mean being on the screen. I mean just just in what general. What do you mean as a? Um, I'm talking about a phrase of no one's gonna do it for yeah. you. So I mean that some like I, I I believe that you know I, I think if you want to achieve something, we do have to like try to do it ourselves. But I feel I feel like there will be people that will come along that journey of maybe supporting or or helping or whatever if needed. Um, yeah. So so, so it's that thing of that. The community thing it's like no one's gonna do it for you but yeah. people will do it with you it's but it starts by yourself though yeah and some people don't start and when you don't start you're struggling to understand even people coming to try and help you because you don't know what it is and you're so stuck in your own ways even the people that are going to come in your life to try and help you you wouldn't even be able to see that as help not everyone because um there's some people, you know, that, that realise it and maybe progress. But some people, they won't. They would see it as, oh, you're trying to say that I'm a bad person or what I do is not good because they don't see past what they do. Yeah. But no, I agree. There's a lot of good people out there that try and help um, people progress. And, you know, you also have family sometimes. I'll tell you, you need to stop that. <laughs> but it's not everyone, unfortunately. It's a lot of people that, have their habits and no one is coming to help them they don't have that support around them that's not everyone yeah do, do, do you know what I, f I feel like maybe maybe there's a war between good and bad not maybe there is a war between good, good and bad and i was thinking what what kind of like context is it shaping it and i think it's around um i think it's a psychological yeah war versus good and bad so there'll be people having conversations around certain things and and you know people trying to make a change so it's like if there is a war and Good versus bad, and that's that's what that's what's happening. Yeah, do you think um, it's to do with education in school as well? I have a feeling we're e missing a topic in e school that could help people. Listen, school, yes, yeah, that's that's a yeah. You just brought it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've I've had I've had couple not a couple. I had a lot of conversations around schools. Um, so my my background is youth work. Mm -hmm. So I've I've done a lot of like work with schools as well, and worked with a lot of school students and stuff like that. Um, there is that. So what you're saying, there's 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 a gap in 
in schools. Like the, there's a gap on how it's structured. There's a gap of, you know, I think there's a big gap of like young people being able to learn who they are from early. And everyone knows there's a gap. Yeah. Every single person talks about this. Talk to every single person and ask them, if, is there anything wrong with school? Pretty much 99.9% .9 of people that I've spoken to has said there's something wrong with school. Everyone knows it. Hmm. Now, why it's not changing is that's a whole, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I think it's also the the difference between private and public. True. So I I don't know much about private schools. I guess yeah. I, I I know a lot about public. But. Should people go? Do you, what do you think? Should people go go to private school? When that's a massive debate, I think to have because why should people have different education based on the money they can put into into it? That that's. That's not fair because when you have public school, depending on which area you're in, it's not a school anymore. It's a rehabilitation centre because there is a lot of troubled kids. And why? That's because sometimes when they're at home, the parents can't afford everything that the private, you know, private kids' parents do. So sometimes they go through hard times where they don't eat good at, at home and then they go to school with an empty stomach. That that's just one example, or they don't have time to have a private tutor at home. Yeah, that's a complete different world compared to a private school, you know. So I I don't think it's fair that education has to affect kids in this sense. Yeah, hmm. and even uh, like teachers and stuff, they all come from private school. Well, most of them, you know, all of them that go to Harvard and all these massive schools, most of them come from there, you know. Yeah, I, I, mm. I agree. Um, I, I think I think some schools are trauma centrals. They're not even yes. schools. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a trauma central. But um, but also I think I think I think what it is the difference is is that um, like it's it's a basically what money does it can it can afford the best talent. So I think that's what private schools have. Do you have Talents? the best? Yeah, the best talent. Yeah. So like for example, like you know, like if you know someone's being paid by the government, um in a particular school and, and there's a limit of how much you can get paid. Mm. Let's say like if, if someone's really talented at teaching kids yeah, and they have the choice of being paid twice or three times more in a private school than going to public school, then mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to go to private school. So that money will attract the best talent. Yeah, um, yeah, it's true. And, and it's, I think it's the same thing. It's like, you know, like if, if someone's hiring someone for video work, like you know, like if they can afford to pay more, then they'll get someone that's more talented. Or yeah. in, in in any type of field, realistically, um, it's 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 just you know if if people have more money to pay for a particular talent. So I think I think that's how that's how, yeah. people, that's how it works. Yeah, I agree. I think it's unfair, but I still agree that we've come so far with the value of money that yeah everything has to be bought. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm I mean. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I've I've been having conversation about money as well, and, and and what that means. And I think, I think it's just re it's it's a representation of someone's value. Um, and 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 I get the other side of conversations, like things about money, and there's yeah. there's there's a lot of people being um, uh, abused or not abused, not the word, taken advantage of to to create more money. And there's like this whole like modern slavery sort. Of, I get that, so I'm not I'm I'm not gonna debate that. But I think, but in general, I think. When it comes to money, I think money comes from money equals value. So meaning like if, if I'm an individual and I, let's say, develop a particular skill set or I develop particular services or whatever it is, then the amount of value I've got will equal that money I'll get. Yeah. If I develop it further, that means I become more valuable so I can provide more value to the world and that means I'll make more money. Yeah. So to me, like value and money are almost sort of equal. So let's say Tesla... I say Tesla that makes a lot of money, they provide a lot of value. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people would debate, they say, oh, it's overpriced and whatever. But actually, if you look at what they've done, it's, it's quite amazing. And it's quite, it's, it's a it's a functional, it's a really functional service that they're providing. They, yeah. they have an institution that creates cars and, and, and stuff like that. So electric yeah. cars that are really, like, they're, they're quite impressive. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I kind of see it. Yeah, I agree with you. Um value it depends how you see the word value isn't it there is money type of value and then you also have um how you value someone do you do you, do you value them as a person or do you value them as what they are worth do you value them as them being kind honest good person to have in your circle or do you value them as you know a worker 
because there, there's different type of values. So I think, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, if I was to hire someone, I would look at their skill set and how much I would pay them. Are they more valuable than if I was to hire that other person that has less skills? Yeah. But then in my circle, I never involve money in the way I'm going to um, be selective in my friendships or the people I want to be around with because that's when you choose the wrong people. I always looking at I, I always look at the kindness of people and what they can bring in terms of, you know, being here for you and what they've done to you what they've done for you in the past. But yeah. I would never involve any type of currency in it. Because that's when you misjudge people. You know, it's not because they make money that they're good people. And some people make money and they are good people. So you have to be able to calculate things properly, I think. Yeah, no, I think I think that's beautiful, and I think you're talking about you know maybe relationship value, and then and, and that's where like you know people choose different things and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I agree with you. I think I don't think I would I wouldn't necessarily build friendships based on how much money someone makes or like you know if they have a particular skill set because I think skill set would be different to like who they are as a person and what their own values are, um, and and what we appreciate. Uh, I, I, I think that's different. Um, but just you know, you know what? But just on on a, on a whole like skill set thing and and all the other stuff, I was thinking like there's certain things that people don't value, which is for example, so in a friendship they would, but in a skill set they wouldn't. For example, yeah. honesty. No, no one pays someone for honesty. No one goes like, who's gonna give me the most honesty possible to to realize or mm. to to look at something? What do you mean, like um, people filter stuff? No, I mean so like like so so this is my my brain works a bit funny sometimes, but. <laughs> But this, this, so, so what I mean by by that is, for example, let's say, um, let's say, let, let's take life coaches for example. Actually, life coaches would, would be a great example because it's not just about well, it's about honesty. But I'm just trying to think of an example. I can't come up with one. Um, but I don't know. Let's say you want to get honesty on something. Would you pay someone to bring the honesty to you? Oh, what's the other option? <laughs> no, nah, there's, there's no other to... option. Right, so let's say let's say let's say you're in a situation you want you want to get honesty. Well, like someone Actually, you telling what, you to, what to, to be honest, you're straight facts. I thought I was gonna digress because it's a stupid example. It's maybe something I'm gonna put back in a workshop and 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 work on. No, no, it does make sense. Like, yeah. would be would people be able to tell you the truth about yourself? Is that what you mean? Or yeah, I th I think along those lines. But I think it's, it it came out in this conversation, so I haven't fully like developed it's the concept mm. yet. So when I develop it, I'll I'll, I'll let you know. I'll just yeah. I'll bring it back to the. the to the podcast space. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So before we start wrapping, actually, so I had another question. So I, w I would consider you as a good person from what I've seen um, so far. I don't know. Maybe you might be a bad person. I'm joking. Maybe. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think you are. But um, I would consider you as a good person. But what do you think defines a good person? In in in, in your perspective. Um. Um, yeah, what defines a good person? I think a kind person, um, a person that's able to um, appreciate life for what it is, um, you know, beyond. It's a good question, you know. It's not sometimes you don't ask yourself this type of question, hey, and when it that's, comes, that's, you're that's trying to <laughs> like. So 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 just just why you think about that like one one of the goals like one of the goals that I've figured out over the period of time within this podcast was it was about asking questions that we don't usually slow down and think about mm. um and and the slowing down part is like really important like sometimes like I catch myself like and it's the self care thing and I think what you do is amazing like you spend you know like a whole day on self care and all of that stuff but sometimes I'm I'm in a I'm in a space where like let's say it hits like eight p.m. And if I ask myself, like, have I slowed down today? Have I had, like, five minutes for myself? Have I actually slowed down and did something for myself? Like, the the, the, the answer is usually that, no, I haven't. So the whole, like, slowing down thing and maybe thinking about things that we usually wouldn't, I think that's, mm. it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think taking time to understand the questions sometimes is important because it makes you reflect more about yourself. So it's a good question. But I think what makes... um. A good person is, I would say from my criteria is when I have people around me. What yeah. makes that person a good person would be their kindness, um, understanding, uh, patience, 
and um, a person that knows how to deal with themselves as well and reflect on their own behavior and yeah I think that that's literally all it takes for me I'm not someone that's gonna go and look for more than I should we're humans you know we all make mistakes um but we're all trying to to progress and be better in the future if we make if we do something wrong we try to not repeat it again or but that's everyone you know no one is perfect but I think it's the way you 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 able to reflect and tell yourself I won't do it again if I've hurt someone I'm going to apologize you know be vulnerable um don't be scared to express your feelings um that makes you special because then people will think actually this is an honest person you know she's willing to apologize not everyone knows how to do that <laughs> it's true i feel like some, some people, people would think yeah they they will be seen they think they'll be seen as weak oh if i apologize they'll think i'm but weak. that's because they're insecure about something yeah yeah it must be it must be coming from somewhere isn't it definitely hmm I think um, I I think the honesty thing and just the authenticity thing. I think, and and this is is it's funny. So I'm the type of person that I I I tell people what it is and how it is or what I think about certain things, and then I find it really funny when it comes like to them telling me that they always like sugarcoat it kind of thing. They just be mm. like, oh like, like hopefully you don't take it that way. And I'm just like, if you're thinking, if you're telling me you hopefully you don't take it that way, I'm like you don't know me. Yeah. Because if you knew me, you know I wouldn't take it in a particular way because that's what I'm about. And But then I realised there's a lot of these things we spoke about in written rules in the last shoot. So, like, there's certain things that are, are you know, rules that aren't written, you know, like we have a rule set within ourselves that we kind of, like, we, we kind of, like, give to other people and we like for other people to give mm. to us. And when they don't, we kind of get offended a little bit. Just go, oh, my God, like, this person. But that's because we all have different sets of, you know, unwritten rules. Yeah. My unwritten rule is like I'm gonna be honest with you, and I want you to be honest with me. But some people don't have that, so. Yeah, I think um, honesty comes in different levels. I think it's okay to filter some stuff sometimes. You have to be um, because some people are brutally honest, and I find it in different situations there's a lack of class in it. It's like you can use different words, and don't hurt the person. Make sure these words are those that they're going to use to help them in the future mm. but don't break them you know because everyone is some people are sensitive i think you would adapt to the character of someone so for example i have a few friends that'll be brutally honest with them because that's what they expect from me but with my honesty i would adapt to people i wouldn't let them adapt to me a little bit don't you? brutally honest Brut- <laughs> 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 but it's true i think you have to be you also have to be like gentle sometimes because you know how people can take things a different way. You know, body language is important. The way you use your words is important. And this is one thing I've realized in, in the past with certain people. Even some people, they don't need your advice. They just need you to listen because then they can actually release that extra weight they have on their yeah. shoulder. Some people just need to vent. Yes. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. No, you don't have to help because they don't need that. They just need that extra support from you. But some people would be full on talking extra mm. for while you're trying to explain to them, you don't need them to do that. You know, that that's that's not good, I think. It's, it's, it's that question that people start asking now. And, and I like the fact that people start asking that they go like, do you want advice or do you want to just talk about it? I like that it? question. Yeah. It's good. So then you're giving them the choice and... They know that you know, that they know. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, I start asking it as well. And sometimes like I'd be like, do you want advice or do you want to talk about it? And then where usually I would have been given advice, they would be like, I just want to talk about it. I'm like, cool, just, just, just talk about listen. it. That's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good skill as well to be a good listener. It's good. So then people know like this is a judgment free zone, you know, you're in a space where you have someone with you. But that's that person is here, but is allowing you to to pour your heart out I think it's a nice thing yeah mm. you know what so th- one of the things I realised like I, f- I think everyone judges and um and I made a conscious decision that you know what if I judge so I was like I'm going to fully judge everyone all the time but I'm going to like judge in the best way possible it backfires sometimes but mm. it's alright at least I'm giving the best judgement possible you know if yeah. I'm going to judge then I might as in well which just... way so like I, I always I always like judge people in the best way okay 
So always like make up the best stories about why people do certain things or that's all of nice. that stuff. Yeah. And sometimes that's not the case, but at least at least like um, you give them confidence. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. It's like um, telling a lady, for example, she's not used to hear it, but you tell her, "Wow, your hair looks great today." Do you know how she's gonna feel for for the next two days? You don't know that, but at least you try to to picture that in your head, and you know how people deal with her already, so you would know how she would take that compliment. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's a it's a powerful thing, you know, to compliment people and to be positive every time. And if you tell her, maybe you should try that instead of say, "Okay, your hair looks ugly today." No, you're gonna say, "Oh, I can advise you to use that color." That would suit you better, you know. Rephrasing everything you say will have a massive impact on your life, but and other people's life because you can damage your relationship with them if you're not careful with your words. And they can have the worst day ever. Yeah. But imagine changing that sentence into something else. They can improve themselves, and you're keeping that relationship intact. So that's why I think it's really important. Yeah, definitely. I, mm. I agree with that. Um, so look, we're gonna start wrapping up. Um, so. We like to do two things at the end. It's gonna sound like three things, but it's two <laughs> things. I promise. So the, the so the first one is um so you know if there's any sorry if there's anything you want to promote, and it's along the lines of um so there's two different types of promotion. So one thing that doesn't belong to you. Yeah. And it can be literally anything. It can be um it can be a story you've heard. It can be something you watched. It can be something you listened to. Anything. Something that doesn't. It can be your friend. I don't know. So anything you want to promote that doesn't belong to you, yeah, that's the first part of promotion. And the second part is something that does belong to you. What would you want to promote? And maybe there might be multiple things yeah. that you're doing at the moment. Um, I have friends that they all have some sort of businesses. I'm really proud of them. But if I was to promote all of them, they'll be like, oh, that's what they... But I'm just going to promote good people out there and, and thank all the powerful influences in my life that have helped me create a community and realize that there's great people out there to help you achieve your goals. You know, you don't have to go through it on your own. You can actually have a group of people around you that support you. So yeah, but that's one thing I have to say. I like that. <laughs> and, and, and something that belongs to you? Something that belongs to me, obviously, the Afro Club 5, we are trying to build up a um, community so we so, want so to. So you're, you're not you're not trying. You are build, you're, We are. You've already built a community. We've, just just okay. to be clear, yes. yeah. When I say trying is because I see the scale that it will take in the future, and it's like quite big compared to where we are now. But yes, we have built a community um, around Black culture events, and we want all cultures to come and discover what we are about. And all these events are run by individual businesses, which what makes us really unique. Uh, and we want everyone to come and make it their own home. This is home for everyone. We are open to new ideas, new collaborations, and we want people to feel comfortable coming to DM us and talking about whatever they think it's going to work, you know? Black culture events. Yeah, I, I, I've been there and, um, yeah, I highly recommend it. Inspirational and, and really good yeah. that energy and atmosphere. Thank you. Space. Thank you. So our next event is on the 21st, 21st of April in Angel. Uh, Buba Oasis is called. It's a really nice space. Um, capacity will be 200 people and the lineup is crazy. So... I really advise people to get their ticket as soon as possible when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely. Um, and the last the last question is, um, so when you get a chance to say something to 8 billion people, um, 8.07. So um, specific. <laughs> to 8 billion people, um, what, what would you tell them? Don't be too harsh on yourself. Allow yourself to go through that journey, which will be filled with joy, could be filled with a bit of trauma, a bit of sadness, but a lot of happiness. And when you allow yourself to be vulnerable and understand what all these feelings are, you'll be more aware and you'll be able to to live, you know, to, to thrive a free life, to make great connections to understand what you want to do as well in terms of your profession but yeah don't be too harsh and be kind and be happy that's as simple as it is really uh, for some of us 
Yeah, I love that. It's, 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 it's the simple yeah. things that fly over people's heads. Yeah. People are thinking about all these complex things, but actually sometimes just slow down and, and, and yeah. Enjoy the ride. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you um, for having me. Appreciate your time. Thank I'm you. in space. And yeah, um, that's it.